Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling podcast. I hope everybody checked out the last episode where I had a coach from the New York Yankees on and we talked about habits of champions. Now, it was a great interview and it really, you know, sort of sings true to me about what it takes to be a great salesperson, that it's not just one skill, it's the years and years of developing skills and habits to become great at sales. So make sure you check that out. Uh, today, I got Chad back on the line. We're going to be talking about what you should be thinking about right now in December and January as we go from one year to another. If you happen to be on a different uh, fiscal year, you can just play this whenever that happens to you. We're going to talk about the classic mistakes, the comp plan issues, uh, what you should focus on, what mistakes we've made and that typically other people make all the time. Also, make sure you're checking out PipeDrive. PipeDrive's really evolved from, you know, a nice single-user CRM to now it's an enterprise-quality CRM. It has some great capabilities, and I've pretty much standardized on it. I love it. Give it a try at PipeDrive.com with the Brutal Truth coupon. You get a full month free to test it out, as well at Nudge.ai. Same coupon code, Brutal Truth, all one word, no space, no hyphen, and... What you get is the ability to have your own data, your own CRM connected up with your email and be able to control your destiny. And this is all about being successful. One thing that I've noticed is the entrepreneurs that I work with are so much more dedicated to learning. And it's kind of obvious because they have to, they have no base salary. They have to produce. Now, why don't we have that mentality? Even though we're only 50% on variable, we should have the mentality of working for ourselves. Yes, our customers, both the company and our end clients, but we have to have that mentality, not get comfortable sitting around doing the administrative stuff of sales and learning how to become better because the variable is not in your base salary. It's in what you sell. So the more you sell, the more money you make. And to do that, you have to become better. Nobody's perfect in sales. You have to become better. So connect up with me on LinkedIn. Check out the website, b2brevenue.com. You get a free ebook there, as well as you can schedule a time to talk about the training. Nothing else but the training. That's what the, the link is for. 15 minutes, uh, I'll share exactly the, the constructs of the training. It's video. It's not only video, but it's office hours every other week and one-on-ones. So that you can actually schedule time to go over your sales calls. You can have your sales calls recorded. Send them to me. I'll review them both by hand and in gong. Show you the results. Give you a video result back. And you can kind of get some coaching there. So there's nothing that's going to make you better, faster than getting independent feedback. Somebody who only cares about making you a better salesperson. So let's get into the interview with Chad. I'll sum it up at the end. And here we go. Hey, Chad, welcome back. Hey, it's December. We're moving into January. This is kind of a unique time of year, isn't it? Oh, yeah. In sales, this is one of those, uh, you know, you want it to be quiet, but it's not. And everybody that's already crushed their quotas, either, you know, either sitting back saying, hey, I already hit my number, so I'm good, or they're going for the accelerators. All right. So it's uh, and then you've got, of course, come through the holidays, which gets really quiet. And then it's bam out of the gates into January. I, I like it personally. It's a I think it's a great way to, um, you know, energize for, for the next quarter, for, for the next year uh, and reflect on what I did well and what I screwed up. And that's it. We think we have, you know, a good five weeks left. But once you start, you know, working backwards on the calendar, it, it's pretty skinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really scary. Take out travel days, take out holidays, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, school breaks or, you know, lovely snow days, which always, I don't know about you, but I've gotten caught a couple of times where a prospect or customers had a snow day and their, their kids are at home now, so they can't make a meeting or can't make a phone call. So there's a lot of variables to juggle. That's it. And a lot of people think, oh, just because they, they can work from home or they do work from home doesn't mean they're working from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And, and this year's kind of weird because we got Christmas right, right at the beginning of that last week. So that last week is pretty much out. Yeah, it's shot. I mean, so take that out. 
So, I mean, you really, I mean, you know, you're going to, in order to get the most out of what you've got left this year, you really have to be focused. It's time to, you know, I believe dig deep, you know, stay focused on what's been working, get the calls out, get the meeting set for after the first year. If you can't get stuff closed this year, right? Don't let up on the accelerator just because there's only, you know, maybe three and a half or four active weeks before the end of the year. And that's it. And if you don't do that, if you, if you take the you know, the foot off the accelerator and you, t- and you kind of relax. I get it. You got to take that, you know, some time off and spend it with a family. But I, I think a lot of people look at January as this kind of black box month. I don't have my comp plan. I don't have my territory. <laughs> I'm not going to invest a second of my time until I know exactly what I'm going to get paid on. Right. That is a huge mistake. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, if you, I mean, look, at the end of the year like this, you have a choice. It's very easy. And I, I work from home, so, I, and I have for years. There have been years where I'm like, ah, you know what? I'm going to take it a little easy for the next couple of weeks, just recover. It was a high travel year, or whatever. But then what has a tendency to happen is uh, the anxiety sets in. Because you get so if you're doing what you should be doing in sales, you get used to the grind, right? It almost becomes second nature. It's part of the DNA. So you think you're taking a break and really maybe you get 48 hours where you actually get some rest. And then all of a sudden the panic starts to set in. It's like, crap, now I'm two days behind. I lost two days of, you know, reaching out to people, connecting, setting up meetings, continuing to qualify, looking at my pipeline, things that I thought were going to close, oops, slipped and I missed it because I wasn't paying attention, right? That acceleration, you know, it's all the way through the finish line. And, and this is a time of year where you have a built-in icebreaker for existing clients, prospects, Everybody loves to talk about the holidays and <laughs> what, what they're doing. And it's a time where you can get away with a legitimate gift, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, no one's going to yeah. put you into, you know, bribery jail or anything for sending somebody some cookies this time of year. Right. And, and you can expense that stuff. And it's the, it's the way of really connecting with people and doing it before everyone else does it. It, right. It's so much smart because everyone's going to wait till, you know, that week before Christmas. And then there's just that pile at the receptionist desk. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody's eating still cookies and donuts and stuff. Yeah. They all. And, and then you get into January and you show up. Some of them are still there. Right. The little snowman, yeah. with the little candy canes. Yeah. They all still sit there. And I think the dumbest thing is thinking that you can, you know, slide a deal into next year, just thinking you're going to get paid more on it next year. Oh, that see, and that's look. I would love it. It would, you know, rainbows and unicorns. It'd be great if every company had their comp plans done and rolled out by January third when everybody comes back, so you knew what it was. But you know what? That's just not the reality. It's not the reality that we live in. So it is better to work with what you know than to guess on what you're going to get. Because the the lovely phrase of we can you know we can adjust your comp plan at any time shows up <laughs> in every comp plan I've ever signed. It does. Yeah, yeah. The the VP of sales has the final word. And that's in there for legal reasons. And and people think, oh, until I have that, I'm really not going to be dedicated. But your manager's most likely not going to take away from you anything that you're really embedded in uh, because they're compensated on who's most likely to close it. So that's what they're thinking about. And if you're sitting around, your manager's going to look at you like, yeah, this person's not engaged. They're really not involved. They're an order taker as opposed to somebody <laughs> who's the go-to person. Right. I mean, the ones that are the best reps I've worked with, the ones that always made me um, work harder. Um, it was like it was like when you hit December, like you came through Thanksgiving, you know, came through the holiday, and you come back, and there was just enough rest that there was just a little bit extra energy, a little bit extra focus for that sprint to the finish line. And the best reps I've been around always made me work harder because you look at them, and go, well, hell, they're not taking their foot off the accelerator. Well, you know, what should I be doing? I don't want to be that guy that the boss or the CEO or the board, Lord forbid, comes in and says, well, what, what are they doing? Why, why are they, why is Facebook on their computer? Why are they not on the phones or out talking to customers? And, and that's it. And if you're not really crush, if, if you are crushing your number, this is the time to make money. And the oh, idea, yeah. I, I remember one year, my best year, probably, you know, certainly in my thirties, I was at my number in June. So I was in, at 15% money for six months. Oh. And it was the most euphoric experience of my life. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. I'm not going to lie. I just got goosebumps. It wasn't even my experience, guys. <laughs> and I, I, I talk about this one deal. It was New Year's Eve. It was 7.30 at night. I had called this account 32 times. The, the guy finally picked up. He goes, 32 times you called me today. 
<laughs> I go, if you picked up on the first time, I wouldn't have to go. <laughs> and, and I was like, look, I'll give you 10 more points if you can get it in now. And he goes, hold on. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. And I, I had mean, my look, boss you know, on the other line, right? We're, you know, we're, we are – you get into sales because you like solving problems or you like the money or you like the challenge or uh, some people thrive on the uncertainty, right? The ups and downs. Uh, but at the end of the day, everybody has to remember that sales is a discipline and it is an increasingly complex discipline due to the digital landscape that we all live in now. So that human to human connection, when you have something like you mentioned earlier, the, the holidays, let's talk about the holidays, or you have some legit reason to reach out personalize that that contact in a way that shows you know your human side and like look i get it you're extremely busy with the holidays and thinking about me and my deal is not at the top of your list just wanted to say appreciate the time you give me now would love to schedule you know 15 minutes next week before it gets really crazy to just kind of wrap this up it's legit it gives you a real reason to reach out and if you stay focused on it and i've closed more deals in december i love the ones that i thought were going to happen in january that that come back into december and i had one it. this year do Did that you? i really i swear everything we've been doing for the last 6 months put us at close um, I was for, I'm forecasting the close the second week of January and literally, um, yesterday he calls me and says, you know what, we've been doing this and going over all the things that you sent over and, and we think we need to do it now. So can we pull it up and can you get out here and work with our teams, you know, the week before the week before things, uh, Christmas, I'm like, uh, you, sure. Yeah, I can do that. But it was because I had just reached out and said, hey, how are your holidays? You know, curious if, you know, you guys have gone anywhere, did anything fun. Um, looking forward to talking. We had a meeting set for two weeks out. And, uh, oh, hey, by the way, I thought you might like this article that we, that just came out that really kind of aligns with what we were talking about. And I get a phone call 30 minutes later. Hey, let's move this up. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Christmas. And that's <laughs> it. If you sell to SMB, there's a, you know, the economy's super good. There's a lot of SMBs that want to spend that money, prepay things for tax reasons. Because, oh, yeah. Right? Love, love it when you can give them the terms to get the money now and not have to do the execution. Although, let's, there is one thing. There's a, something I got to vent about for a second. I don't like, and I got, I've gotten two or three of these emails in the last couple of weeks. Hey, is there anything left? That's the subject line. Is there anything left? And when I open it up, because I'm, I'm now I'm curious, what is he talking about? He wants to know if I've got anything, just literally come straight out and ask me, is there anything left in my budget? Now, I don't have a relationship with this guy. This, I mean, I've talked to him once. I don't have like a real relationship. Yeah. And it, it's like, okay, I could see sending it once. I've gotten it from the same person three times. And I just find it annoying. It's kind of like, look, be creative. That, yeah, <laughs> be, that's, that's the opposite creative. of creative. <laughs> Anything left? I think I have a girlfriend like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but you understand their financial situation, and I've I've had that where they, hey, can we prepay you? And I'm like, sure. But then I have the, you know, the how do I spend that money so that I can invest it in my business before the end of the year? But but just understanding that is critical, and understanding what their priorities are, and you also got to think that they're think they're already thinking about 2019. Anybody who's reasonably high up in a company, and they're going to get bombarded in January by reps asking, you know, what are your plans for 2019? No one's asking them now, right? Well, and I think actually that's a really good point, and I think it's really smart when reps realize that. The 2019, okay, so we're sales reps, so we think nothing really gets done on the new year until we get our comp plan, right? That seems to be the flag <laughs> in our head. Now, in, in most companies, usually you get the what, you know, November and everybody's going, crap, we got to come up with a comp plan. We got to come up with a strategy for next year. But in reality, there are conversations happening even before Q4, but I mean, definitely in Q4, executives are talking about, all right, what is the strategy for next year? They're doing the budgeting. They're doing the assessment of what worked this year, what worked last year. They're not, they're not, you know, sitting around just going, oh man, I can't wait for Christmas dinner or holiday dinner to show no. up. They are, they're getting ready. So the, the, the smart reps for my money would be calling saying, hey, here's a couple trends that we've noticed or heard our clients talking about that they're looking to face in 2019. Curious what your guys' plans are and how we might be able to help. But do it now. Don't be, don't be the, you know, the person that's doing it you know, January 3rd through 7th. 
And that's it. And going into next year, we're in a very unusual situation, situation I haven't seen in probably a decade, where it's super hard to hire salespeople. So what does that, <laughs> what does that mean for every rep? That means territories are going to get uncovered for a while, maybe even a whole quarter. And so you knowing where the, you know, the bodies are buried in Q1 and, and say, hey, I'll cover it until you hire somebody. Yeah. You know, instead of playing hard to get, I'm not doing anything until I get my comp plan, which I, I can't I remember a time where I got my comp plan before the middle of February. <laughs> that's, and even, that, that's even early, I think, some places. Yeah, and then there's the, the Q1 hangover because when you go from 15% money to 5% money, it's like you just got a 60% cut in pay. Yeah. And you're the same superstar, right? You're like, hey, wait a second. I scored a touchdown. That was me. <laughs> yeah. It's really the only profession that I know of where the better you do, the harder they make it. <laughs> yeah. I remember you, you get the trophy and you're like, oh, you cut my pay by 60%. <laughs> Thanks, like, Thanks on, for the $15 guys. trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're right. Though. I mean, I, I think a lot of times I see reps – they and I don't know if it's just part of the profession or people that are attracted to it, but I see a lot of reps um, making excuses or, or or justifying, rationalizing. You know, oh, it's Q4, everybody's you know, it's really quiet. Or I love you know the, the same lull, July and August in, in the summer. Oh, everybody's on vacation, and so they 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 tell themselves that these things are real because we've all heard the stories and the stereotypes. But consistency is the key, right? And then if you take those times when the rest of the sales reps that are out there working are thinking that and not working as hard. You can outperform them hands down. That's it. And your manager always takes care of the A players, you know, even when they oh, don't like yes. them. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought all managers liked A players. <laughs> well, you know, and now you have a scarcity, right? Because right. The, the unemployment rate is the lowest it's been in forever. And, you know, if somebody's any good, they're going to stay where they are. So there's going to be a lot of musical chairs at the beginning of the next year. There's going to be the ones with the hangover going, I wasn't treated fairly. I'm going to look around. And you just can't spend that 90 days not committed. You, no. You've got to you make a decision. I mean, you can't afford to spend a couple of weeks not committed yeah. with the way it's now. I mean, the, it's a, it's an amazing – Amazing market conditions that we're seeing right now. The number of new companies coming up that are getting funded again, the, the SMBs that are growing at ridiculous rates. Uh, I have one client who hit a, a 65% annual growth rate. I, I, I'm just like, what? Like, are you sure those numbers are accurate? Like, you know, it's, I'm used to, you know, we've been, we've both been through the bubbles where it's like, Hey, we got 2% this year <laughs> well, or we didn't go down. Right. The thing this time, I think it's real though, as opposed to like the nineties where it was a lot of fake stuff, venture, yeah, yeah. venture inflated stuff, vaporware. Yeah. The, the van, uh, you know, web van and Yahoo. And it's like everybody getting eyeballs, but no revenue. I think right. at least today it's revenue, and I, there's lots of talk about a recession, but I think the stock market just went down because it couldn't go up anymore. I don't think there was any. <laughs> right. There was no logical reason. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, and it's just if you think about it, like I, I always, you know, look, selling in, in a market like this where, uh, you know, things are very positive um, is is fun. It can be great fun. You hear a lot of success stories. You, you know, it's great to see some of these companies succeed. Um, and then there are also positive things about selling in a down economy, because if you're really good at selling and understanding the buyer's perspective, I've actually often made more in down economies than I have in economy, not this year, but in, in certain times have made more in down economies than when it's like this. Um, everybody out there is excited and, and, you know, there's still the, Oh, you know, are we going to hit our numbers for next year and that kind of stuff? But there's not that, underlying um right on the edge of panic that i've seen before yeah yeah i don't see that um you know what i hear mostly is that it's very crowded very noisy which, which means you just have to be different more creative sure. more personal more giving versus pitching uh, i think you know we burnt out email last year but people just put on the accelerator this year and right <laughs> You know, so I, I see that kind of hitting a wall, but people are still people and they haven't changed in a long time. 
right you know, all the research that's showing you know people adapting to computers and to smartphones we just don't adjust that fast so we still trust our friends we still listen to other people uh but we're becoming kind of numb to that cold pitch yeah well, there's no reason. I mean, it, it, in my experience, I have not found it to be extremely effective to just show up and throw up, right? Just to walk in with a pitch. Like, it literally, let's just have a conversation. If you don't have a problem that I can help you solve, then then why would I waste your time? Why would I make you sit through a pitch where all I do is talk about me? Nobody wants to hear about me. I want to understand what their problems are. And if they're cool problems that we can help solve, then, hey, here's how we might solve them, right? Make it more collaborative, but but do it uh, do it on purpose. Don't make it, you know, oh, I think I'm going to try this pitch today or I'm going to try this approach. Like be consistent with that ability to connect and get ready because next year, you know, you talked about the crowded market space. I, I'm going to bet we're going to see some consolidation oh, yeah. next year, which is always fun, right? Sales reps freak out when there's consolidation. And and I think it's a huge opportunity to make sure that those relationships that you can, you can found them very strong foundation right now in Q4 and carry those with you into Q1 so that regardless Regardless of when the comp plan comes out or when consolidation happens or market conditions change, it's those relationships that carry the sales professional forward. And, and that's it. The order takers, you know, they're not going to have a life, a long lifespan in sales. <laughs> you know, it's, no. the, it's the people who have connected with their customers, who have a relationship with them, who, who the manager goes, I cannot pull this person out of this account. That has to be the viewpoint that you have with your customers. If you're just the expedient expediter of orders, that's not selling. You know, that's support. Right. <laughs> sales and, operations. It's sales operations. <laughs> and I, I've seen a lot of that. And the consolidation can be good. I mean, the, uh, one of the times I made my most money was when my company got bought. You know, we got put into this huge company and we, we five decked the revenue in three years. And yeah, there nice. were just these monster deals that no way on earth we could have got as a startup. Yeah, there's always, you know, it's. I think it comes down to mindset too, right? I mean, even with the Q4, oh, should I slow down? Should I speed up? Or how do I, you know, effectively attack Q1? I think a lot of it, you know, starts with the mindset. Like, do I, you know, am I in this to be the best I can be at selling rather than servicing? You know, I don't want to take orders. I want to talk to people. I want to hear what kind of challenges they've got, see if I can find ways to help them solve them. So for me, it's a curiosity mindset. Like I'm, I'm infinitely curious about the challenges that people are facing and ways that I may be able to help. Um, so it, that I bring that to everything I do. Some of them, some of the reps that I know, it's the mindset of, okay, I'm going to work harder than anybody else in the organization right now just because they've got this ultra competitive streak, you know, and want to be the top dog. Whatever it is, that mindset has to be consistent and carry you through what are the normal ups and downs of seasonality or market conditions, consolidation, expansion, whatever it may be. That's it. You cannot be on the emotional roller coaster. It's just death. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you can't be the John Belushi's, you know, the, oh, you know, I'm on top of the world. Whoops. No, I'm not. You know, it, right. And it, it's hard not to be because that's the natural thing. That's what we're pulled on. We get, you know, the big commission check and then we get our new comp plan and you're like, oh, my God, I got half the territory, <laughs> twice the quota. And I never got a comp plan where I say, ah, I can blow this out. I always like you go through a little lull and it's natural, but you got to get over it. You got to, you know, put your big boy pants on and come to work or find a better thing. But you can't be in the middle. You can't be on the fence waiting for an offer to come in. It's just you're killing yourself, and that that Q1 is golden time. People yeah. spend money, people make plans, people are active, they take meetings, they're not on vacation. Uh, you've got really Q1 and Q2. The summer, you know, it, it does slow down, and you can utilize it, but you know, there's the year does have a cycle to it. It does, and it's and it's great if you are if you are self aware enough to understand how you respond to that cycle, and then how you can apply what you are the best at, in a way that's going to maximize the results within those cycles. And, and that's it. And if you take that and you tell your manager, "This is what I want to do," whether you're a big game hunter or a farmer, or you know you like to break into new accounts, whatever you're both good at and like to do that your manager values. And most managers will customize a territory and a comp plan for you. You know, they, they probably will give you pushback, but at the end of the day, they, they 
know that they're only renting A players. They they don't own you like the B players. <laughs> you know? I love it. You I know? love it. That was one of the best lines I ever heard, and it's so true. Because you got to ask yourself, who's more scared of me leaving, me or them? <laughs> right. <laughs> because starting a new sales job is no cakewalk either. You know, I don't know how many sales jobs you've had, but the first six months of all of them is really hard. Oh, it's tough. I mean, you're learning a new business. You're learning new players. You may have relationships. You know, even if you're selling in the same market, the company that you're selling for. If if I was selling SaaS over here, and I know, you know, I know all of the SaaS players and all of these people, but then I come over to Company B. Company B may have a different, completely different product approach, or market view, or technology stack, or different accounts that they're in, or verticals that they're focused on. There's always, you, there's always. A ramp up, and I, you know, I've had my fair share of, of sales jobs, and and you're right. The first six months is just, it's the it's the hardest part, and it is so critical because it will help predict um, long longer term success in that organization. But I see a lot of people shake out before they hit that first six month mark. And, and that's it. And they don't hire a salesperson to take over a golden territory. They yeah, have- they're not handing out money. No, <laughs> they hire to give you the leftovers. You know, and I remember taking the job and anything that was real in the territory was a holdout. And I'm like, okay, so there's basically nothing here, <laughs> you know, We're, and you yeah. got six months to prove yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you have six months to hit time to revenue. And if you don't do it, um, then we're gonna have to have a conversation. But really, just so you know, I said six months, I meant three. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and all that excitement I shared with you during the interview process, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, honeymoon phase over. <laughs> And I think people misunderstand that. They think it's going to be all the same. And even when people come from a big brand, they think a lot of it was due to them, that the success was due to them. And that's typically why I almost never hired a rep out of a big brand because they were mostly, you know, account managers, order takers. They were, you know, look good in a suit, but I didn't think they could really break into a new account because they never had to. Yeah. Well, and that's just it. I mean, brand will open the door. I mean, again, especially in Q4, Q1, brand will open the doors. But it, if you don't know what to do once the doors open, uh, you, you know, somebody else is going to beat you. And, and it's that I, I'm with you 100%. I mean, I've met some refs that I think are great from brands, but they, they, they work better in larger organizations because they're used to having all of the support or the brand impact you know, of the name or, you know, large, um, large sales ops team that's, you know, providing them content. They don't have to. I don't have to scrabble for it, right? I'm I'm more of a like I want somebody who's going to hit the ground and it's you know take no prisoners and figure it out. Have done it, you know. I've been successful before. I understand. I'm going to have to figure it out again here, and and I'm driven to be the best. Those real big game hunters are they're rare in my in my experience, especially coming out of large companies. And one last thing, I mean, what's your experience as far as negotiating a comp plan? Have you had success doing that as a rep? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's certain things, right? So there's, um, for me, it's always, you know, what, what is the total compensation package it is, you know, what, where are you setting that bar? And then let's talk about how it's spread out because I'm always the one, it's easier for me because I'm always the one that says I want more variable. Yeah. Like re- reduce, reduce my, my base, increase my variable and my accelerators. Cause I know what I'm capable of doing. And most, most times they're open to that. Um, some companies are just like, no, that, you know, look, we have to have standard plans. This is the way it is. Uh, but look at the end of the day, it never hurts to ask. It, it doesn't hurt to ask. And there are a lot of moving pieces. You know, there's territory, there's holdouts, there's multiples, uh, there's, you know, bonuses, and, you know, I've gotten like big deal bonuses, you know, deals over a certain size. You get a different accelerator. Uh, and you're right. Anything that's based off of performance that's, you know, a marginal increase in revenue, they're very open to. You know, base salary, not so much. Right, <laughs> right. Well, or and expense that's, I mean, account. Just, yeah. yeah, just just assume that those numbers are kind of. I mean, you can discuss a little bit, but I honestly think the better place to spend the time and the the negotiation, um, you know, leeway that you may have is really on making sure that your variable structure is set up so that when you come out of the gate and start, you know, you you you, you get the revenue two x faster than they expected a new rep to do. There's a bonus, you know. So you said six months. If I hit this target in three, what's my accelerator on that? You know, they they love that stuff. Because then they know you're bought in, you're focused. Uh, they also don't have to pull their wallet out now. 
There's a lot to be thinking about this time of year, isn't there? <laughs> and this is a roller coaster time of the year. There's so many highs and lows and people pulling in all different directions, climate changes, that we have to really keep our head on straight and not lose it and really think about where we want to be this time next year. Um, too often we get caught up in the momentary emotional uh, situation, the push and pull of what's going on in the, our world and thinking that it's permanent, thinking that it can't change, that we can't make it better. But this is just one of those times of the year. And to, to really anticipate it, to prepare for it, to think it through is really going to get you a lot further. Think through, you know, that January through really uh, May typically is a really critical time for your business. And if you don't really pay attention and plan for it, what ends up happening is you miss out, then the summer hits and, you know, Almost every business in the business-to-business space slows down substantially because you've got, you know, 25, 30% of the people away on vacation all the time. Very hard to get things done. Then it speeds up again at the end of the year. So the beginning of the year is the time to really build that pipeline, to start your big deals, to plan out how you're going to crush it in 2019. Can you believe it? Um, uh, I'll go through, you know, kind of what I do, um, building out a year to excellence course that's going to be not just sales, but everything that builds up into sales, uh, you know, diet, exercise, sleep, mindset, grit, determination, building out your why. Uh, and it, it's going to take a year because you really have to spend time doing it every day. Little tiny steps every day that compound on top of each other so that by the end of the year, you're at a different level. You're playing at a whole nother level. You have the, the machinery, your body, your mind, but then you have the skills and the strategies to, to become a great salesperson. Now, too often what people do is they try and find just one single trick, skill, technique, and they, they just stick with that. And that may be enough, but typically it's not. That usually works in certain cases, and in most cases it's not as effective. And that is one of the things that I've really learned about sales is that, that sells. That sells books, but it doesn't get you where you want to be. There's too many people out there writing books who have courses, who have podcasts, who have either never sold or they failed at sales. I, 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 I loved sales. I hated working for other people, though. That was my downfall. Um, if I could have continued to work for other people, I probably would have. But I, I like working for myself because I'm a, I'm a real tyrant of a boss, uh, you know, I, to take a day off is something that I just don't let myself do very often. I, I tend to work too much. I need a new boss. I need somebody a little bit softer. But anyways, that, that's my issue. But what I want to do is kind of take all the things that I've learned, all the things that I'm studying, share it with people, come up with the, the easiest way to do it, not the hardest. Uh, you know, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts about the hustle and grind. I don't I don't want people to have to work 16 hours a day. I want you to be able to work a reasonable amount of time and have a life, but do it the smartest way possible in the best industries and in the best jobs. Work the best deals. Close the deals that are going to be the easiest to close with the highest return for your investment. I am not the type of person that suggest you go and kill yourself. I've tried it. It doesn't work. I still do it sometimes and I got to catch myself and I got to say, okay, put the right things in the right order. And when you don't have the right things in the right order, things break and then it, you end up spending more time repairing them than, than you do building. What you should do is look at your life as a building block. Make sure you have your health, you have your mindset, you have the good relationships with your family and your friends. And you put your time at work on the most important things and you build. And this is the time of the year where we, we kind of get the reset button when we work for other people. And that was kind of the hardest part for me was I go and I build up a great year and then I get a new comp plan, a new territory. It's like a new mission. 
And that, that didn't sit well with me because it was basically a handicap. Some people got some of my great accounts, uh, got some of the people I hired, and all of a sudden now I'm at a lower commission rate. But that's what I like about working for myself. It took a long time to build up, but now it's compounding. And I get to – I don't get a new comp plan next year. I get to work at the – I get the opposite of it. I'm able to increase my rates. I'm able to in, be more effective with my time uh, to outsource the things that I have broken down into tiny little duties, little tasks that I can have now scale with other people. Now, this trailer that I put on – pretty much all the ends of the podcast, are the results that people are getting from the course. It's allowing people to use what I have developed over 25 years as clean, easy ways of getting into accounts and the fastest way to close complex sales. So I, I put it on here as a testimonial so that you know that it's real. And the courses, I, I'm committing uh, an enormous amount of time. It's going to be my main focus in 2019 uh, to really polish them up and engage the audience into them. The students get real world cases to show people and make it something that you will use every day to become better. Uh, one on ones, uh, office hours, Q and A's are all going to be put into the course and. The year of excellence will be put into the closing the complex sales so that you have something that every day you can get to to build yourself up into the salesperson you want to be. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're connecting up or following me on LinkedIn as well as being real friendly with a like and a share over there on LinkedIn. Appreciate you listening. And thank you for a great 2018. It's been an amazing year. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to this episode. And I really would appreciate everybody who goes on to LinkedIn, connects up with me or follows me there. If you happen to see some of my content flying by, if you could throw a little thumbs up or a comment or a share, I definitely appreciate it. It helps spread the word about the podcast. And <laughs> make sure you're checking out my website, b2brevenue.com. You can get my free book on how companies make product selections. It's a real book. Uh, it was on, it is on Amazon, but I give it away for free. Just register there. It'll email you a link to it and you can just download the PDF from there. Also, if you want to check out the courses, start the conversation, get the meeting or closing the complex sale and you have more questions about it. The short answer is there are video courses. You get access for a year, but it's also a community. What does that mean? You can ask questions anytime via voicemail or email. I answer them within a week, put them into the course. We have office hours every other week. It's an hour long. We course where you can basically, I pick a topic, answer questions. You can ask questions. Also, you can schedule one-on-ones for free, and we just talk through your particular use case, and that gets shared with the course. So if you don't have time for office hours or the timing doesn't work, or you just want some more one-on-one -on -one help, that's all included for a whole year. So it's really a, a year to go from where you are to where you want to be. And so it's not just videos. It's not just knowledge. It's practice. It's getting feedback. Y you can send me emails. You can send me uh, your presentation. I'll help you with anything that you need to close the complex sale or get the meeting. And you can check out them at b2brevenue.com. So that's it. I really appreciate it. And please tell somebody about the podcast and let me know if I can help you in any way. Oh, and you want to hear some results from the course? Well, here you go. You, you know, I love the approach. It's working for me just fantastic. If I sent you some of the emails, which I should, the conversations that I'm having with people, I, I think you'd be blown away because they're not really about work. Yeah. I've figured out if you can kind of get personal with them, like one lady, it's all about her family, kids. And then I sprinkled in a little bit around work and she's LinkedIn sending me messages on LinkedIn, <laughs> photos of her family. <laughs> um, no, I'm not even kidding. I should show this to you. You'd be stunned. I was shocked. And we're going, she, she even, we're going to launch on September 6th. And yesterday <laughs> she shot me a LinkedIn message and said, Hey, Ron, why don't we get on the phone and do a video call beforehand so our lunch isn't so awkward? We're like barely not meeting each other for the first time. <laughs> oh, holy cow, right? Like, this is unbelievable. 
So this is not the first time that this has happened. She's kind of an extreme, yeah. but um, I'm starting to figure out a pattern where I can actually make this a process, you know? So good. Good. Yeah. I'll show you that. So it's getting to that point. And I'm every time I do this, I'm like, God, this is unbelievable. You know? So, and it feels better too, doesn't it? Oh, right. Let me tell you something to be able to go, go to lunch with her. I'll even talk to her on the phone, right? We're going to talk about, uh, family, kids, work-life harmony. Cause we read, a, I shared a thing with her from Bezos about work-life harmony. This is where the conversation will start. Now, at some point we're both not stupid, right? We know we're going to talk about work and <laughs> we know why we're both there, right. but to kick it off this way is so much better. And to end that lunch with the last five to eight minutes of telling, you know, well, what are you guys doing with digital?